Hello chess lovers, I have a very interesting game for you played by two legendary chess players. With the white pieces is playing Mikhail Tal and his opponent is Nigel Short. The game was played in 1987. Though this was a blitz game, but the game was played on a very high level and I decided to share it with you. Tal started with e4 and Nigel Short goes for his favorite, French defense, e6. D4, D5, Knight D2, Tal goes for Tarash variation. C5, Nigel Short is choosing the open system. Knight F3, Knight C6, E takes D5, E takes D5, Bishop B5, Bishop D6, D takes C5, Bishop takes C5. This is a standard line seen many times. Bishop D6, White castles, Knight E7, H3, not allowing the bishop to jump on G4. Black castles, c3, a6, bishop d3, bishop c7, bishop c2. Now Mikhail Tal is going to line up his bishop and the queen on this b1, h7 diagonal and target black king. Knight f5, and there it goes, queen d3. Now Tal is threatening to play g4 and win a piece. Also, there is a checkmating threat. But Nigel Short in return plays a very provocative move. Queen d6. Yes, Nigel Short is the one who is going to sacrifice a piece first. g4 by Tal, g6. g takes f5, bishop takes f5. And after queen d2, Nigel Short is also capturing on h3, weakening Tal's king side. Now, as you can see, the rook on f1 is hanging. But Mikhail Tal is not even thinking about moving away the rook. He plays queen h6, queen d7. Now the queen is eyeing on g4 square, threatening to checkmate white king. Queen h4, covering the g4 square. Bishop takes f1, king takes f1, knight e5, knight d4, rook e8, bishop f4, knight c4. Knight c5. Nigel Short played queen c8, but a better move was playing queen e7, offering an exchange of queens. But this queen c8 move allows white to gain initiative, though Mikhail Tal missed the best line. He played knight d3. A better move was playing bishop f5. I am sure if this was a classical game with a longer time control, Mikhail Tal would have found this move. Now, the idea is that if g takes f5, this is going to be catastrophic for black, black king will get checkmated. You have to give up your queen. Or, after bishop f5, if a move like queen d8, then bishop g5, white is starting to use the weakness of the dark squares. If queen d6, then knight d7. If bishop d8, then white can exchange the bishops and then play knight f6 check. If king g7, then knight takes e8 check, rook takes e8, and of course white has a huge advantage. Let's go back. But after queen c8, Tal played knight d3, bishop takes f4, knight takes f4, knight takes b2, and while Nigel Short is grabbing the pawns, Mikhail Tal is attacking. He played knight h5, but actually king g2 is stronger. Both moving away from this diagonal, not allowing any checks, and also preparing to bring the rook to h1 square and just crush black king. But after knight takes b2, we see knight h5, which allows black to equalize the game by playing queen takes c3. If king g2, then knight d3 with equal fight. Well, if knight f6 check, then king g7. If bishop takes d3, then queen takes a1. Knight h5 check, g takes h5, and... All white can do is to give a perpetual check. Let's go quickly through this line. And white can give a perpetual check and this is a draw. But after knight h5, Nigel Short played queen c4 check. But this just forces white to play king g2. And there it goes. The rook is coming. Rook e6. Of course, you can't capture on e6 because the knight is pinned. But here comes knight f6 check. Rook takes f6. Queen takes f6. Queen takes c3, rook h1, rook f8, rook h3. Now the knight is pinned as you can see, that's why white is playing rook h3, kicking away the queen. Queen d2, here comes knight f5 and Nigel Short resigned. White is threatening queen g7 checkmate. 
If g takes f5, then rook g3 check followed by rook takes g5 checkmate. A very impressive game, I think, played by both players. Your comments and questions, please. I hope that you enjoyed this game. Good luck.